I want to tell you the story of the best whiskey maker the world never knew. And his name was Nathan Nearest Green, affectionately known as Uncle Nearest. He was an enslaved person who around the mid-1800s began working on the farm of a whiskey distiller in Tennessee. Uncle Nearest quickly picked up the skill and became the best in town. He would soon be asked to teach a young white man the special process that resulted in the smooth Tennessee whiskey he was known for. That white man's name? Jack Daniel. Daniel would go on to open the Jack Daniels Tennessee Whiskey Distillery. He hired Uncle Nearest as a master distiller, the first black man to hold the job in U.S. history. The story of Uncle Nearest was lost a long, long time ago, but an author named Fawn Weaver has been working for years to honor the legacy of the man behind America's most famous whiskey. In 2017, she created Uncle Nearest Whiskey in, uh, in his honor. She sold nearly 1.5 million bottles of Uncle Nearest Whiskey since. And now she hopes to diversify an industry dominated by white men by creating a $50 million investment fund aimed at helping minority-owned spirit businesses grow. Fawn Weaver joins me now. She's the CEO and co-founder of Uncle Nearest. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Thank you for having me. So Fawn, I didn't know the story about Jack Daniel before we were pre preparing for this segment. And a lot of folks uh, didn't even know about it uh, until 2016 when Jack Daniel owned up to it, 150 years after they were founded. Uh, what were you the most surprised to learn about Black people's history in the spirits industry? I don't think it's surprising to learn anything when it comes to African Americans that are in this industry because we were here from the beginning of it. And there are certain aspects of it. Tennessee whiskey, for instance, it, the only thing that distinguishes it from bourbon, uh, you know, to the north of here, Kentucky, only thing that distinguishes it is what Nears Green taught. It is the process that he used, which is charcoal mellowing, a charcoal filtering, taking that traditional bourbon distillate and running it through sugar maple charcoal. Well, that's something that came in with the West Africans. But when you look at overall our spirits industry, you can pretty much peg. We were all always there from the beginning. So it, it wasn't surprising to me. I think what is surprising to me is there's still people who don't know Uncle Nears, who don't know the brand. I think a part of that is, is because we hear it every day because it is the most awarded bourbon of the last three years in a row. And, and that 1.5 million bottles was a while ago. Uh, <laughs> I think that was the last time we reported <laughs> our numbers, but uh, we're well over that. And so I think we live in a little bit of a bubble where we feel like everyone now knows who Nears Green is. And it, it's really exciting whenever I get a chance to share his story from the beginning with people that aren't familiar familiar. I'm excited to share this story with those who are watching on their screens and screens and devices. And you've now gathered more than 10,000 artifacts about near screen, which is cool. You founded a whiskey company in his name. What made you want to take this piece of history and make it into a business? It's one thing to teach yeah. people about the history. It's another thing to take it and make it a business venture. Well, I think that that's what came natural to me. I started my first company at 18. So this is 26 years of being an entrepreneur. That comes most natural, uh, writing and, and being an author. That's a part of my life as well, but that's never been the majority. I've always been an entrepreneur. So I think it just sort of fell to what I knew best. But I also, when I was looking at writing a book and then turning that into a movie, one of the things that struck me, I went with Nearest's family. We went to go see Hidden Figures. This was years ago. And we went to go see it. And, and like everyone else, we were in there and we were cheering and clapping and, you know, we're like, this is the way the movie needs to be. And then two weeks later, you could not have paid me to tell you the names of the people that Taraji P. Henson, Octavia Spencer, and Janelle Monet played. And so it dawned on me that I was focusing on this book and then the movie, but that wasn't the reason why we're still talking about Jack Daniel and Johnny Walker and Jim Beam. We're talking about them because we're still drinking the juice in their bottles. We're still seeing them on shelves 
everywhere. So it became very clear that the attention, if we were going to truly cement the legacy of Nears Green and to make sure the story was not lost again, the only way we were going to do that was to make sure not only was it on a shelf, but it was a bestseller. It was a most award winning because we had to do it with excellence if we were going to do it. The story took so long for the world to come to know it. If we were going to do it, we were going to do it right. So now you have a $50 million venture fund aimed at funding minority-owned spirit brands. And you talked about your own uh, drive as an entrepreneur. In this industry, it's basically all white dudes. I mean, to be <laughs> honest, me. that's a lot of industries. Let's be, <laughs> let, let, let's be clear on that, right? I was like, don't get it twisted. But why is it so important for you to set up this fund to, to fund the business ventures of black entrepreneurs like you are? Well, I think when you think about it, Uncle Nearest is is the the fastest growing American whiskey in U.S. history. But more importantly, it is the best selling African American spirit brand of all time. Founded, right? That shouldn't be. We're only three and a half years old. We're going to turn four years. How could we be the best selling of all time? What that says to me is there's not enough of us in it. And once you're in this industry, you realize there is a really large chasm between the industry overall and then the very few African-American black owned businesses. And one of the reasons that those businesses are not really able to scale and they're not able to grow is because they don't have the resources. There are some other incredible brands out there that could be the next Uncle Nearest. And I turn down money every single day. I'm not accepting money in my company anymore. I finished my Series C, I don't know, a year and a half ago and I'm done. And so, but I turn down money every single day. And so when I'm talking to these founders, to these entrepreneurs, and they're sharing the challenges and the struggles they're having with raising money, meanwhile, I'm doing these quick replies are going, no, thank you, no interest. Thanks for your interest, no, thank you. <laughs> And it dawned on me <laughs> that I could reroute these people to the brands that I absolutely mm -hmm. believe have the power and the ability to be the next Uncle Nearest. The people who invested in a seed series, their money is now mm -hmm. worth 16, 17 times more than it was just three and a half years ago. So the ability to do that again, and I think that I am and my team are uniquely qualified mm -hmm. to be able to help these brands. It's, it's so fascinating. Thank you so much, Fawn Weaver, uh, for joining us tonight. Hi, I'm Zerlina Maxwell. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more from Zerlina by clicking any of the videos on this screen and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thanks for watching.